In this video, we're going to see how to put text on a circular path with Photoshop Elements. Instead of plain linear text, you can put your text on a circular path. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new blank document. Go up to the File menu and choose New Blank File and the new dialog box appears. I'm going to make a 10 by 10 document. So click inside of the width field and type 10 and then press the tab key to highlight the height field and also press 10 in there. And then click OK to close the dialog box and accept your changes and we see our new document in our work area. Now I want to add a couple guidelines so that we can find the exact center of our document. To do that, go up to the View menu and choose New Guide. We know that we have a 10 by 10 document. I want to position this guide halfway over. I know that half of 10 is 5, so I'll enter 5 in the Position field and then press OK to accept that and close the box. And you can see that we have a new vertical guideline uh, halfway over in our document. Next, I want to put a horizontal guideline, so I'll go back up to the View menu, choose New Guide again, and this time click on Horizontal and enter 5 and click OK. And now we have a horizontal, the halfway point. Of course, where the two guidelines intersect is the center of our document. Now let's add a circle shape to put our text onto. So click on the Type tool from the toolbox down here to make it active. I'm going to make a change in here right away, and that is to the alignment of the text. You can see you have these three alignment choices down here. Right now it's set to left align. I want to change it to center align, which is this one, so I'll click on that to make it center. And I also want to make a couple other changes to my type. Right now it's regular and I want bold. If I click on this little arrow next to where it says regular, you can see I get all these choices. Now some fonts might not have as many choices. You might just have a couple like bold and italic, but this one has a bunch, but I do just want bold. So I'll move down to where it says bold. And once that's highlighted, I'll click on it to choose it. I want to change the size of my font from its current size, which is 100 point. So I'll click on the tiny arrow next to that. And if I move my cursor down to the bottom of my window, it scrolls down so I can see the whole list. And I want 60 point, so I'll click on that. Now I need to switch to the Text on Shape tool. So I'll click on that to accept it. I want to draw a perfect circle. So first of all, I'm going to choose the ellipse over here. Right now it's set to rectangle. So I'm going to click on the ellipse shape. And I want my ellipse to be constrained to a perfect circle. And I can do that by holding down the Shift key. And I also want to draw out the center of my document. And I can do that by holding down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC. I'm going to move my cursor over to the exact center of my document, where my two guidelines intersect. And then I'm going to press and hold down Shift and the Option or Alt key. And then I'll click drag diagonally and you can see that my line or my circle is being created. I don't want to make it too big because my type is going to go to on the outside of the circle so if I get too close to the edge of my document there might not be room for my type. That looks good right there so I'll let go of the mouse button and also let go of the shift and option or alt keys. Now I'm ready to put my text in. Watch my cursor as I move it towards my line and see how it changes once I get over my line. That indicates that I can click there and I'll get the flashing icon to show me that I can enter my text now. You have to put your cursor over the line and click once before you can add your text. I want my text to be all caps, so I'm going to press the caps lock key on my keyboard. I'm going to type Photoshop Elements. Click the green check mark to accept that. 
Notice in the toolbox that the Move tool is now active. That's because by default, Element switches to the Move tool after you commit to your text by clicking on the green check mark. Just so you know, that's a preference setting that you can change in your general preferences settings. I'm not going to do that right now, but that would prevent it from uh, switching to the Move tool. Okay, let's say that we want to center the type along the top of our circle shape. To do that, we need the Shape Selection tool. To get to it, first click on the Custom Shape tool to make it active. It's located down here in the toolbox. It's this one that kind of looks like a blob. So I'll click on that and then go down to the Tool Options and get the Shape Selection tool by clicking on it down there. It looks like an arrow. And watch my cursor as I slowly drag it towards the text. See how it changes to an I-beam with an arrow on either side of it? Once you see that, it indicates that you can move your text. This is the main reason why I had you change the alignment from left alignment to center alignment. It makes it much easier for adjusting your text on the shape like this. So now all we have to do is click and drag. Make sure you stay on the outside of the circle because if you go on the inside, the text will pop to the inside of the circle, which we don't want. We'll stay on the outside and then just drag until the cursor is right over that vertical guideline and then release the mouse button. And now our text is perfectly centered along the top of that circle shape. That circle and the horizontal and vertical guidelines, those are non-printing items, which means if you were to print out this text right now, you wouldn't see those items. You would only see the text. If you want your text to go completely around the circle instead of just partway around the circle like ours is right now, one thing you can do is enlarge the text. So let's go back to the text on a shape tool by clicking on it in the toolbox and then place your cursor onto the, the circle and click once. And now we can select all of our text by triple clicking. And once you have all the text selected, go back down to the tool options and change the size by clicking on the little arrow next to the size box and scroll down. And the only choice we have that's bigger than the 60 points that we're at right now is 72 point. So let's try that by clicking on it. That makes it bigger and goes around the circle more, but we still have quite a gap here, so we need to be bigger than 72 point. Well, we can also type in a number if you click inside the size box to highlight the number. And then let's try typing 100 point. That's too big because the word elements completely went away because there wasn't enough room for it at that size. So now we know that 100 point is too big and 72 point is too small. So it's somewhere in between there. Let's try 90 point. So I'll click inside the size box and type 90, and that's still too big. Instead of continuing to select the current size and then type in a new guess, one other way you can change the size of the type is by using your up and down arrow keys on your keyboard once you have the text selected like we do now. If I press the up arrow key, each time I press it, if you look at the size box, the size of the font gets bigger each time I press the up arrow key, and each time I press the down arrow key, it gets smaller. You can change it in increments of 10 rather than in increments of 1 if you hold down the shift key when you press the up and down arrow keys. Press and hold down the shift key, and then press the up arrow key, and the size changes to 100 point. So I'm going to hold the shift key again, and this time press the down arrow key, and 80 point looks like it's getting pretty close, but now we know we're somewhere in between 72 point and 80 point. So at this point, I'm not going to hold the shift key anymore. I'm going to go back to changing it to one point size at a time by just pressing the up arrow key until it looks how I want it to. That looks pretty good. Let's try one more. Yeah, I think that space looks better, so I'll click on the green check mark to accept that. And if we want to see what our text is going to look like without the distraction of all the circle line and the guidelines and everything, we can turn some of that off. Go up to the View menu and click on Guides to hide them. 
let's show our layers panel. We can do that by clicking on layers down here in the bottom right. And we just have two layers. We have our background layer, which is totally white. And above that, we have the text layer. And right now, the text layer, we can tell, is active because it's highlighted in blue. If I click on the background layer, now that's highlighted and our circle disappears. It just gets hidden, basically. So now we can see what our text will look like without having that. And it looks pretty good, I think. For the next part of this tutorial, I want to add some additional text along the bottom of the circle, so I'm going to change the font size back to 60 points. So I'll select our text layer, get our text on shape tool active again, and triple click on the circle to select all of the text, go to the size box, and Click on 60 point again to make it smaller, and then I'll click the green check mark to accept it. So that ends this lesson on how to put text on a circular path with Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.